Sharon Jane, coming to Hi. us from the middle of nowhere. In fact, it's so far in the middle of nowhere, she can't even get her own internet. She has to borrow it from her neighbor. Are are you sneaking it? Are you like are you like a kind of getting it on the down low or? Uh, I've got beautiful neighbours, and so I'm very grateful. I, I had to drive a few minutes to get there. <laughs> Go through a few gates, but we got there. So, yeah, I'm here. Well, Sharon, welcome, and thank you for all the hard work you you um, did to get on the show. We're so thankful. And we hope those little squirrels just keep the generator running. That, that's the <laughs> main thing. So, anyways, first of all, now, now this is funny. Luth I mean it's not funny funny haha but it's it's interesting because you have a Lutheran upbringing and I have a Catholic upbringing but then I spent several years in the Lutheran church um hallelujah lord to whom shall we go you have the words of eternal we would sing that right before the reading of the gospel and I love that it was so cool but anyways Lutheran church upbringing how how did that affect your your songwriting, your life, your how you how you how you conduct yourself as a believer. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, I was brought up very conservative Lutheran, and we were quite um, disciplined in those days. We would, I had to learn big chunks of the Catechism, which was a big book of Luther's writings by rote, and have a less like. Um, tests every Friday at school so yeah we were good doctrinally and I think that that's really been a great foundation for my writing because I'm you know I feel aware of some of the trappings that can happen with uh, um, you know some emotionalism but having said that um, because I was born again at 22 like that brought a fullness to the experience of all this stuff that I'd learnt as a child that didn't have the life that I really now know in the revelation of the Holy Spirit so um, mm -hmm. yeah I'm really grateful for the upbringing and um, I did learn the Bible a lot and so you know that I think has impacted me I'm focused on the gospel um, but um, yeah, now I've sort of grown over the years um, to have the revelation of the reality of that mm -hmm. That's so good. And and like I said, Lutheran, that's such a solid background. It's such a good good way to start. What would you like to sing for us first? Well, I've got a song called Comfort My Heart, which is uh, I wrote in 2016. And I wrote it for a, a friend of mine who had uh, been going through massive problems in their health and they thought they were dying. Um, there was a possibility of them dying. And so I wrote it really as a cry for them um, to the Lord. And it's kind of loosely based on Psalm 91 about, you know, the Lord covering us with his wings, which has become a very popular psalm now. Um, you know, a lot of people are turning to it in these days. So she ended up coming through. She's still alive, but um, this was written for her.
there we go. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. That was Sharon Jane singing just a beautiful song for her friend that was based on Psalm 91. And <clears throat> as you were saying, I was kind of, I was kind of, you know, scanning through it. And verse 11 is so cool. He will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. And that is just, ugh. That's just so comforting. That's such a good psalm. So thank you for sharing. That was really, really pretty. Thank you. Um, next, I see that you are involved, or a like, few years ago, we won't say how long, but a few years ago, you were involved in a coordinated team ministry in Australia, Christ Knows No distance and no is k-n-o-w-s and then no is n just because because you know some of us are you know bears a very little brain like me so i thought i'd just explain but anyways tell us a little bit about that yeah well it was started by somebody else but i ended up coordinating it for a few years um which was fun in my 20s and um it was going to particularly to isolated places that was the idea of it because often teams go to like cities and go to big places big churches but this was aimed at um, going to anyone in even in small villages or uh, small churches and supporting them and getting alongside them helping disciple and um, doing outreach as well running concerts and um, doing busking on the streets to try and encourage people to come to the concerts and just getting alongside people overall yeah, we had amazing things happen. Like a lot of miracles happen through that mm -hmm. ministry. It's with young people just trusting in the Lord, just going out in faith. It was awesome. That that is so cool. I, and and to take people away from the trappings and the and you know the good you know meals and the good um, hotel rooms and and put them into a little bit more you know areas that they're like. You know, hey, this is kind of where most people in the world live. So that is, that's, that's just beautiful. Sharon, what would you like to share with us next? Well, this next song, I, I felt one day the Lord just gave me the words, despite all. And despite all, I was thinking, like, despite everything that we go through, all the craziness of this world, the difficulties we have, um, and how we are still not completed in this life in perfection. And yet, despite all of that, Jesus still comes and lives inside us and he makes his temple inside us. Um, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So uh, this song is about that and just a, a, a celebration of that. Despite all the noise Despite all the busyness Despite every argument Despite every hurt and every fear You are home to my soul You are home for the hopeless You are peace to the storm You are warmth to the coldest Despite all the pain, despite all the loneliness, despite every bitterness, despite every single time I fail, you are home to my soul. You are to come live inside and fill this temple with your love. Despite all the noise, despite all the busyness, 
in us Despite every argument Despite every hurt and every fear You are home to my soul You are home for the hopeless You are peace to the storm You are warmth to the colder with all my heart for you are awesome God you lay down in sacrifice to fill this temple with your love I love you with all my heart for you are my daddy Preparing us for above You fill this temple With your love oh. That was so good. You you had a line in there. That I just want to ask you real quick. You give warmth to the coldest heart. Mm -hmm. And Red and I were talking right before this about the Grinch. And of course, we know that's the de facto coldest heart ever. But but how how did that line come to you? Like like I know sometimes my heart gets really cold and. And God just, you know, takes me. And I was just wondering, was, is that personal or is that just something that the Holy Spirit just dropped on you? Ah, oh, it's definitely personal. Yeah. Because I remember one time, like actually it was after I'd been coordinating that team ministry for a couple of years because I started getting really burnt out. I didn't really know how to uh, organize things properly. Mm -hmm. I got a bit too enthusiastic and I was involved in many ministries all at once. And, um, but I started realizing my heart just started to become dry and even though I was doing all these great things for God I actually had a dryness in my heart and I, I mm -hmm. didn't really know how to deal with it because I felt like I couldn't change it and I remember just calling out to the Lord and just saying God please soften my heart I, I don't I can't do it um, and I just trusted him and I knew he would mm -hmm. and then he just started to do it over time so um, he really changed me. I know that it is his supernatural power to do that, to bring that warmth and that it's real and we don't have to pretend because really I was, even though I was managing ministries, um, you know, sometimes you can just get into the swing of it and you keep going even if you're not feeling it inside. And there's a, a point of that to be, um, you know, obedient um, and meet your responsibilities, but also we've got to be authentic and real and really you know, have that real faith and real time with the Lord, intimacy with our God, so that it's Him filling us. It's not us moving in our own flesh um, and that it's the Holy Spirit that comes and flows through. So, yes, it's real. Absolutely. I, I do write from the heart and I write from my experiences. Yeah. Mm. That's so good. Um, next, one of my favorite things, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth Go there for and make churchgoers. Wait a second. No, no. Make, make donors. No, no. No, no. Make disciples. You get it. I, it and I saw that. And I, I love that. So uh, tell us a little bit about, about this part of your life, the mentoring, the teaching, and the disciple. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, growing up, you know, I, I had a lot of good teaching in the church, but we just sat and listened. You know, that was what happened in churches. And uh, especially being female as well, like we didn't have many opportunities to really share our faith um, really in those days, especially. But um, then over the time when the Lord started changing me and massively um, and he taught me a lot about um, really participating. I actually worked in a few areas um, in the world, like in a psych hospital and then with autistic people and their families. Um, and I worked in multidisciplinary teams. And mm -hmm. this is where each of the team members come from different backgrounds, um, but everyone's treated kind of equally and you just use your talents 
for the Lord, I mean, sorry, for, for the, for the organization and, and that it works together. You just do what you're good at and you kind of work together. Now, some of those things I learned through uh, my times of not even following the Lord, when he brought me into a real relationship with him, I realized he gave me all this richness of understanding what it is to be the body of Christ and how to participate in what he was doing so that each member starts to really use the talents that they have in his service. And um, so for me, discipleship is a lot about helping people understand what it is to live in Jesus and to really let his life flow and to participate in what he, your purpose is in God and to see how the whole body is built up in faith and in growth and in maturity. So to me, that's, yeah, that's part of it. There's, there's a lot to say. I could probably give you <laughs> hours, um, but yeah, so it's, it's about real relationship is the issue relationship with God and mm -hmm. then letting the true principles that he's given us like forgiveness and things like that, um, have effect in your life so that you've got integrity and that you're walking in the spirit, not to the flesh. Is that a good oh, start? Good, Sharon. I, I, when, when Red or um, Elizabeth, whoever singles this thing out, that, that's, that speech right there, I may borrow a thing or two because that was really, <laughs> really good. Um, what song would you like to sing for us next? This may be well, a last one. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll sure. Sing. I've got a Christmas song actually that I wrote in 2014. Um, and uh, the backstory is that when I was young, I was like very greedy and couldn't wait for Christmas and just, you know, completely fleshly, right? And then when I became born again, I really rejected a lot of that type of thing, all of the consumerism. And I um, didn't even celebrate Christmas really. Like I remember traveling at one point at Christmas and I didn't care about it. Um, to me, it was all about worldliness. And I was also aware of some of the pagan roots, if, you know, that have come in I won't go into it now but um, you know then over the years the Lord also showed me how this time of year is such an amazing opportunity to worship him publicly like when else in the year do you go to a shopping center and hear a hymn played you know worshiping God like that happened to me yesterday when I was in a shop and it wasn't even a Christmas song but they were inclined to play these how great they are or something like that at Christmas and it's just such an amazing opportunity so I felt to write a song that was focusing on how Jesus is honored at Christmas and that um, yeah just really helping to see where he came from the fact that he had um, such an amazing place in heaven uh, you know his Godhead he let go of like Philippians tells us and and just served just came as a servant so it's about that What an honor to worship you, Jesus. This season of Christmas we share. You came as a baby and one humbly born to offer your life as a prayer. Where was your crown? Where were your robes and your
lives in this temple and sits on the throne for oh, glory upon his crown. We are his feet, we are his eyes and his hands. We reach out in love and the Sharon Jane, I just threw away all my Andy Williams Christmas albums, and I just want to hear that song. <laughs> the rest of my Christmas experience, that was so beautiful. And not only did Jesus make his life a prayer, but, you know, my thought was, that's our goal. We, we yeah. make our lives a prayer. It looks like you're doing that. That is so cool. Sharon, is there any way we can find out what you're up to way out in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm on lots of social media, so that's how I get around mostly. I do travel as well, but uh, when I can. But I'm on Facebook, Sharon Jane, and I have Living Stream associated with everything because originally I wanted to be Living Stream. I thought I was going to be a band, and I thought Living Stream is what I want to do because that represents the Holy Spirit like just flowing in his stream mm. and being creative and in Jesus. So I love Living Stream. I got the um, website livingstream.net, which you can also look at. It needs an update, so I haven't done it for a while. But I'm mostly on Facebook is the main thing that I do a lot of. Um, you can uh, follow me as a, a personal on my personal page and also on my music page. Both of them have Sharon Jane and Living Stream. On them and then also um, I've got a YouTube channel as well Sharon Jane and I think I've got live and stream amongst a lot of those videos so it's easier to find as well um, and most of those are just demos um, just a one-off in the lounge room kind of thing but I did make an EP back in 2018 with six um, songs and it's very well produced it was by Peter Stevenson from turnaround music and um, he has done a lot of production worldwide um, with a lot of people. And um, and Dave Holmes does the uh, guitar work on it. I didn't play mm. at all on that. Um, and he's one of Australia's leading Christian uh, guitarists. So I was blessed to have him on there because he was a friend mm. of the producer. So, um, yeah, so that's how you can find me. And so it's on Spotify and iTunes and all those other places as well. And that's called Flow, that EP. So, um and you can download it if you like from those places. It's also available on my website mm -hmm. if you want to do that. Uh, a lot of people don't do that anymore, but um, yeah, <laughs> there it is. Well, Sharon, that was a great way to start this evening tonight. Thank you for all that you've done, all that you're going to do. Oh, beautiful, beautiful stuff. And uh, again, thank you for being in the middle of nowhere, but finding a an oasis of Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> that's it yeah thank you thanks so much for having me i'm glad it worked out this time last time was really hard because the, all the internet cut out so badly and it made me it just crushed me i felt so terrible but i'm so thankful you gave me another go and and i hope to be here more often because i've got a lot of songs well that's such a blessing thank, thank you sharon jane appreciate sure. you being here tonight 